Welcome to this YSL tutorial. In this video we're going to teach you how to use report variables in Microsoft SQL Server reporting services. We'll start the video with a quick look at what report variables are and why you might want to use them in the first place. We'll then move on and show you how you can create a report variable and how to use that variable in an expression in a text box within your report. Once we've covered report variables, we'll then move on and talk about how to use group variables. Again, we'll explain what they are and why you might want to use one, then show you how to create them and how to use group variables in expressions within your report. So let's get started. A report variable is simply an expression which is calculated once each time your report runs, and they can be particularly handy when you want to avoid the on-demand processing feature of reporting services. So to show you what I mean by that, I'm going to insert a new column into this basic table, and in the text box in that column I'm going to insert an expression which calculates the time at which the text box was displayed on screen. I'm going to use the now function to do that. This calculates the time down to the second. If I hit OK and then preview the report, I should find that I get the time at which the text box was displayed shown in the text box itself. Now, that's all well and good, but if I switch to the next page, what I'm going to find is that the time has changed to the new time that the page was loaded. And this is all due to the on-demand processing feature of reporting services. Values, uh, expressions, are only calculated when they are actually needed. Even worse than that, as well as showing a different time on each page, if I actually switched back to the first page of the report, it's going to show me a different time to the one that it originally showed me. And you can imagine, if you were creating some particularly time-dependent calculations, that could be a big issue. So what we're going to do in this little video is show you how to use report variables to avoid that sort of an issue. To create a report variable, you need to be in the design view of the report and you then need to display the report properties. One easy way to do that is to right click in the background of the report and choose to view report properties. On the dialog box which appears, there's a tab called variables and you need to head to that. And then you can simply click the add button to add in your new variable. Think of a sensible, descriptive, unique name for it. I always start my report variables with the letters RV, and then some kind of descriptive word which uh, tells you what's contained in the, in the variable. I'm going to call mine timestamp. What we then need to do is provide a value for that variable, and you could actually just type in a value, a number or a string of text here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate this using the now function again. So if you hit the FX button across to the right hand side, we can insert the same function as earlier, so equals now, open and close brackets, and then click OK. If you then click OK again, we've created a new variable which is available to this report. So I'm going to do the same thing as I did last time, I'm going to insert a new column into the table, and I'm going to add an expression to this new text box. But instead of just using the now function itself, what I'm going to do is use the expression builder to select my report variable. So in the variables category, I'll find any report variables I've created. And if I simply double click, it inserts a call to that variable as an expression. If I hit OK and then preview the report again, what I should find this time is that I get a new timestamp in the uh, in the text boxes and if I switch to the next page I should find that that timestamp is exactly the same no matter how long it takes me to get there so there you go there's one problem solved with the use of report variables it can create fixed timestamps which avoid um, problems with sensitive time dependent calculations another slightly less obvious thing that a report variable can help with is the processing time of your report so to demonstrate that, I'm going to create a new um, calculation in this table, which is going to calculate the percentage contribution of each film's Oscar wins to the total of all of the Oscar wins. So to do that, I'm going to add a new expression to this text box, and it's fairly straightforward. I'm simply going to take the film Oscar wins value and divide that by the sum of film Oscar wins over the entire data set, which is called DTS Films. So there's that expression created. If I hit OK, I'm going to do a quick little bit of formatting to the text box itself to make sure that we've got some um, some nice formatting going on. So let's uh, apply a percentage format with a couple of decimal places. And then if I preview the report, what I should find is that each film shows me what percentage contribution its Oscar wins make to the total. The small downside with that, although we get the right result, 
The downside is that each text box has to calculate the sum of film Oscar wins in order to calculate that value. And this um, this table contains, I think, about 260 records, which isn't a big hit. But in the real world, where you have thousands upon thousands of records, that can have a big impact on the processing time of your report. So the next thing to do is use an, uh, a report variable, which will avoid that problem. So again, to create a report variable, we need to head back to the design view of the report and right click in the background and choose to view report properties. On the variables tab, I can then click the add button to create a new variable. This one's going to be called RV total losses. And then I can hit the FX button to launch the expression builder. In the data sets category, I'll find a link to the sum of Phil Mosca wins, which I can simply double click on to insert. All I need to do then is click OK. Click OK again, and my report variable is then available. What I now need to do is modify this expression to use the report variable rather than the current expression. So I can right click and choose expression. And I can take away the part that I've just generated in my report variable. So I sum the Phil Mosca wins value for the data set. I can take that part away and replace it with a call to my report variable called RV total Oscars. Quick double click, hit OK, and then preview the report again. Now, I should see, and I am going to see, in fact, exactly the same answer. And you probably hadn't noticed any difference there in the time it took to make that report appear. But this report is now doing much less processing than the previous one, because the sum of film Oscar wins is only calculated once when the report is loaded. Now that we've seen a couple of examples of report variables, we'll finish the video with a quick look at how group variables work. So to get started with this, I need to create a grouping level within my report. I'm going to do this using the Groups panel down at the bottom of the screen, and I'm going to add a group to the, uh, to the, de the Details row of this table. If I right-click on the Details, choose to add a group, I'm going to add a parent group, and I'm going to group by the country name that a film was made in. I'm also going to include a header and a footer at this point, and then hit OK, and there's a basic grouped table. I'm not going to spend any time tidying this up, although in the real world I ordinarily would. Um, but what this gives us is a very basic grouping level so that all the films are grouped by the country in which they were made. What I'd like to do now is, as well as show each film's um, contribution to the total Oscar wins, I would like to show each individual film's contribution to the group total of Oscar wins. So in order to do that, I need to calculate the sum of Oscar wins for each country group. And again, just like we saw last time, if we were doing that on a single row in a basic expression, that would be adding unnecessary processing. It would be calculating that value for every single row. So instead what we'll do is we'll add a group variable which will calculate the total Oscar wins for each country group. So again, to create a group variable, we need to head to the design view of the report. But this time, rather than viewing report properties, what we're going to do is view the group properties. So find the group in the groups panel, right click and choose to view group properties. Again, on the dialog box, you should find that there's a variables tab. And if we head to it, it works in pretty much exactly the same way as the report variables does. So we're going to add a new name for our group variable. I always start my group variables with the letters G, V, and this one's also going to contain the total Oscars, so G, V total Oscars. The value again, I'm going to hit the FX button to launch the expression builder, and all I'm going to do is enter the sum function and refer to the film Oscar wins field. And this will automatically calculate the sum for the group, so the sum for each country. If I click OK and click OK again, my group variable is now available to be used in an expression. So to add my expression which will use my group variable, I'm going to insert a new column into the table and I'm going to right click in the blank text box and choose expression. The expression is again going to be very similar to what we did earlier. We're going to take the film Oscar wins for that row and divide it by the total film Oscar wins for that group. And that value is stored in a variable. Now this is where we run into a slight issue with the expression builder. If I head to the variables tab, can you see the problem? It only lists out report variables and not group variables. 
So you've got two choices basically here. You can either type out the full syntax that will refer to your group variable, or you can cheat. If you double click on any existing report variable that you have, you can then simply take the actual name of the variable itself and replace that with the reference to your group variable. Now I've been quite sneaky, I've kind of made sure that my group variable only has a single letter difference to the report variable that I created earlier on. So what I can do is backspace the R, type in the G, and that will refer to my group variable total Oscars. Slightly disconcertingly, the whole thing is underlined in red, indicating that that doesn't exist or it's not going to work. But trust me, it does. If you click OK, and then let me just make sure that the formatting of this text box looks sensible. So I to the, uh, the numbers of the dialog box, we'll add a percentage format with two decimal places. If we preview the report at that point, we should find that our expression works perfectly. So anywhere where there is a, a film with Oscar wins, it calculates that, film, that film's contribution to the total of the group. So for most of these, actually, there we go, New Zealand, that's a little bit better. So we can see that different films have different numbers of Oscar wins, and we get different contributions to the total. You probably also noticed, somewhat annoyingly, that certain countries, purely by chance, don't have any Oscar wins at all. And for those, we get the NAN error rather than just the value of zero. So just as a quick little extra, will tidy up this issue so that if a country does not have any Oscar wins at all, instead of the error message, we see a zero in its place. So to mask our basic divide by zero error, what we can do is head back to the design view and we can modify the, the expression in the text box. Um, and a simple way to do this is using an if statement. So instead of just always performing this calculation, what I can do is check if, using the, uh, the I if function, And what I'm going to do is check if the value of the variable, the group variable total Oscars, equals zero, then what I would like to do is display a zero as the result. Otherwise, I would like to perform the calculation that I previously created. So if I then click OK and preview the report one more time, I should find that everything looks a lot more sensible. So there you go, there's a, an overview of how you use report variables and group variables to create time-dependent calculations and to save processing time when your reports run. If you've enjoyed this training video, you can find many more online training resources at www.wiseowl.co.uk.